Good morning. So, got it's a holiday today, actually. I don't even know what holiday it is. Maybe someone could leave a comment. <laughs> um, so anyways, I've got the car for an extra day because the place is closed and I'll bring it back tomorrow, which will be Tuesday. And I'm gonna get a whole bunch of filming done today. And the clouds look kinda cool. Can definitely get some cool time lapses. And that's what I'm looking for. So, uh, gonna go grab a car wash, like I do every time I start to film, and then we'll go from there. Let's go. Headed up to the top of a parking garage. I'm gonna get some time lapses with this car. Engine just turned on. And for myself, obviously. It's a cool spot actually. What's annoying? Annoying is when you forget your memory card for your camera, which isn't a big deal because I have extras. But the custom firmware is on only one of the memory cards, so I lose some functions, which normally isn't a big deal, because I'm just recording. But, let me get out of the wind. But I am recording audio with an external mic, and for some reason, the camera isn't switching over from the external mic. From the internal mic to the external mic. And it's a huge pain. Really frustrating. I'll just have to clean up the audio. Oh well. Okay, I'm gonna set up this camera and do a time lapse. that I wrote in the other day? Well, here's its bigger brother. I can't believe... I just saw one parked and here's another one. They must be doing something in the city. It's an RS7. What the heck? These cars are so gorgeous. Oh man. <laughs> Another spot, another time lapse. Just going hard at this car today. Getting lots of footage. Feeling good about it too. So, yeah. Let's continue on. Look at the peak. Also, what a ridiculous sky. It's simple, but. It looks kind of crazy. I'm setting up another one. Okay, I mentioned how I forgot my Magic Lantern SD card. Well, the one that I'm using is the one that I use in my GoPro. You know what? I'll explain this at home. Okay, so let me explain what was going on with my camera. Earlier today, I forgot my memory card for the camera that I'm using right now, the T2i. That T2i has custom firmware on it, and that means certain SD cards allow it to do other things, and then when it doesn't have that SD card, it's a little bit limited, but it should still work the same. 
So what I had to do was take my GoPro SD card, because I wasn't using it, and put it in that camera to film, because I was already pretty far away. And that SD card is a high-speed card. It's perfectly capable of recording at 1080p, but I kept having this happen. See? Really annoying. Keep in mind, this is the same error that caused Casey Neistat to do this. So anyways, it's annoying. What's going on here? The camera is basically turning itself off because something called a buffer is filling up. Let me try to explain this. Okay, let me break this down real quick. One of these diagrams. You've got the image sensor it takes on light and that light gets sent from the sensor to a processor of some sort and then that processes the image and sends that data to some sort of buffer. The reason why it needs to go through this before it gets saved, there could be different amounts of information for each frame of the movie, meaning you could have more data or less data, data, time, the data rate could be changing. This then goes to the SD card. If your card's too slow, then this buffer is going to fill up and then your camera's going to shut off. And that's what's happening because the cards are crappy even though they're supposed to be fast enough, they're not writing fast enough. Why do I have two different buffers? Well, basically I'm representing two things. I'm representing the crappy SD card with the skinnier funnel, and I'm representing the good SD card that I use all the time that never has issues with the wider funnel. Basically, it's the communication. It's the fact that the buffer can't send data to the SD card, so it's filling up, and the SD card can't receive, so the bus which is essentially the lines that connect them, doesn't allow that proper flow of data. The SD card is stalling so that the buffer has to fill up and compensate. But if it takes too long, then you encounter errors. Okay, so let me explain what's going on here. I've got this jar. It says image sensor. The liquid, think of it as data, like ones and zeros flowing through the camera. Basically, the image sensor has picked up this amount or this amount of data from light entering the camera. And this is the process that happens before it gets stored in the SD card. So when you have a good SD card in it, there should be no issues, which is how I have it set up right now. So I've got the image processor. This is the first step. It takes the raw data from the image sensor, which has just collected the light, and it's going to put it into some usable form of information. And on most cameras, this is the most integral part. This is what lets newer cameras do like 4K, and then older cameras can only do 1080p. All of this is because it can only process so much data at a time, and they get faster processors, and they have better cooling, and things like that. So mine can only do 1080p, but something like the new Sony RX100, doing 4K in slow motion, that's because it has a better, faster image processor. Then the image processor passes through to the buffer, because you need a buffer when you're sending tons of data and you want to be able to save it. Like I said, the data amounts are going to change. Sometimes one image will have a lot of information, and other times it'll have a little bit of information. And hopefully the camera has been designed to only process enough information to fill up the buffer and send it to the SD card. But that's when the issue comes in. That's why there's a recommended speed for an SD card, because they know the speed that is required for the camera, and if you need to write to it faster than it's capable of, then you hit a bottleneck and your camera screws up. 
The issue is when you have a good SD card and it still doesn't work. This is the system when I have my working SD card. Pour this in and I'll probably get water everywhere first time testing this out. It doesn't matter how fast I pour it in. You can see the buffer filled up a little bit, but it still allowed it to drain in time before anything overflowed. And actually that's the real term, is overflowing. So let's set that up again, but this time with the crappy SD card. So this time we've got the terrible SD card. We'll see if this works. First attempt. And this will show you if any one of these overflows, the camera screws up, it says error, whatever, you get the this video is automatically stopped recording. The most annoying thing that Canon cameras do. So let me just dump a bunch of data into the camera. And that was it. Simple as that. The buffer filled up, the SD card wasn't able to take the data as fast, and the camera screwed up. That's it. That's what this experiment was for. Simple as that. Couldn't be a more simplistic demonstration. So that's that. I just wanted to explain that because some people may not know why their camera is turning off automatically. And you don't need to smash your camera, for one. Uh, you just need to find, even though an SD card may, may say, you know, USH-1, like ultra high speed, which is perfectly suitable for these cameras, not all of them are going to work properly. And I found that the Kingston ones work really well. They still do it on occasion, but the SanDisk, it happens almost every time you first turn the camera on and you start it. It's quite frustrating. Now there are some ways to get around this if you're interested. One is with Magic Lantern, there's a setting that will automatically begin your video again. I've explained that before. You'll lose about between 10 and 30 seconds of footage, but it's good for time lapses, so you can still leave the camera. If it shuts off in the middle, it'll start the video back up, which is great for time lapses. Another thing is you can turn a beep on with Magic Lantern that will notify you when it's turned off which is also good because when I'm talking to the camera I didn't have the beep on before and I'd be talking to it like this and sometimes it would just stop recording but it would start recording again this was before I knew that the beep existed so I'd lose like 30 seconds of me talking which was extremely frustrating so I hope that was somewhat informative and if you like this you should like the video obviously and uh, subscribe because I'm going to be doing more things like this also if you have any suggestions for something you want to see made or you're interested feel free to leave a comment I do lots of different things I have lots of ideas of what I want to do but I also like to hear from what all of you think so let me know in the comments and everyone be good and good night. Oh, 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 oh,